Hello everybody, my name is Bernhard and today I'm going to show you how you can measure the frequency performance of audio components with the Bode 100. To perform the audio measurements I brought an audio amplifier and a speaker and we're going to find out what the 3dB bandwidth of the amplifier is and what effect the equalizer of the amplifier has. When we use the Bode 100 as a frequency response analyzer, we can simply determine the complex transfer function of the amplifier by measuring the output voltage and comparing it with the input voltage of the amplifier. Alternatively, if we use the Bode 100 as a vector network analyzer, we can simply just pick up the output voltage of the amplifier and then compare it to the source voltage of the Bode 100. However, since the amplifier's input impedance is not 50 ohms, we possibly introduce an error and so we need to calculate the error we introduce in comparison to the first method by measuring the input impedance of the amplifier. And this is what we're going to do first. To measure the input impedance of this amplifier, I have connected a chinch cable via a BNC adapter directly to the output of the Bode 100 and we can measure the input impedance quite easily. On the screen you see the measurement curve where I start the sweep at 10 Hz, have a marker at 20 Hz and another marker at 20 kHz. We can see that the impedance at 20 kHz is approximately 10 kilo ohms, so this is much higher than the 50 ohms, so we can expect only a very small error. Further on, we see that the impedance is in the beginning quite resistive and becomes capacitive later on, and we can see this from the negative phase shift of the impedance. When we use the Bode 100 in the vector network analyzer mode, it uses the output voltage of the Bode 100 as a reference voltage for the measurement. The real input voltage depends on the input impedance of the amplifier. Therefore, we make a small error when we use this measurement method. To find out how big the error is, we can simply calculate this voltage divider and add the value that we have just measured. By doing so, we see that the error that we get is typically around half a percent. And therefore, it is absolutely adequate to use this measurement method. To measure the transfer function of the amplifier, I am simply feeding the output signal of the Bode 100 into its CD input and at the speaker output we have connected a real speaker so that we can measure the transfer function with the correct load connected. Here I am using an 8 ohm speaker and I pick up the signal with a 10 to 1 probe and feed it back to the Bode 100. To perform the measurement correctly, we need to set up the Bode 100 so that it uses the internal reference for channel 1 and for channel 2, since we have an external probe connected, a 10 to 1 probe, we have to switch it to high impedance mode. This means that the 50 ohm resistor is switched off. Our frequency range is from 10 Hz to 100 kHz and I can now start the sweep. OK, we are now ready to measure. On the upper diagram you can see the complex gain of the uh, amplifier and at the bottom you can see the phase shift of the amplifier. I have at the moment set the volume to 10% and I have, I have prepared three memories, one for 10%, one for 50% and one for 100% volume. So let's store the data for 10% volume and then increase the volume to 50%. We already can see that the curve is changing because the amplification needs to go up when we switch the gain or the volume to 50%. Now since we have a complete sweep, I can select the volume 50% memory. And store the data into the new memory. Now I will switch the amplifier to 100% and we're going to hear a lot of sound. <laughs> yeah, here we are. One more sweep to be completed and then we can store the memory into we can store the data into the memory volume 100%. So the memory is now stored and I'm going to switch off the sweep so that we get rid of the noise while we do our analysis. So now, let's determine the 3 dB bandwidth of the amplifier. To do so, I set my first cursor to the center of the frequency band, which is roughly 10 kHz. And then I set my cursor 3 
to minus 3 dB in comparison to this value. We can now see that the lower frequency band starts, or that the frequency band starts at 96 Hz, which is above the hearing threshold, and so we will not get the full bass. Now we will copy the dB value that we have for the lower frequency to cursor 1, so that we will get the upper frequency. And now we can see that the upper frequency is 93 kilohertz, which is way above what our human here can hear. So we have an ultrasonic uh, amplifier here, but don't be afraid, the speaker won't be able to do 93 kilohertz. So our frequency band is now from 96 hertz to 93 kilohertz. So now let's determine the amplification range of our amplifier. To do so, we simply activate the memories that we have recorded earlier. And to get a better view, we're going to optimize the gain screen. As you can see, the amplification ranges from roughly minus 9 dB at 10% volume to about 22 dB at 100% uh, volume. So this gives us a total amplification range from 31 dB. On the phase side, we can see that the volume setting has nearly no influence on the phase shift of our amplifier. As a last measurement, we're going to determine the influence of the frequency equalizer on the frequency response of our amplifier. Uh, to do so, I will reduce the volume to 50% again and start the sweep. Well, and I will change the frequency equalizer to increase our lower frequencies, to increase the upper frequencies and reduce the middle frequencies. And I'm now expecting a camel shape on camel like shape of the curve. Yes, and here we are. We can also do it the opposite way, which means we decrease the lower and the upper frequencies and increase the center frequencies. And now I would expect a dromedar shape. Let's see if I get it. Yeah, here we are. So this is the influence of the frequency equalizer. This video has shown how easy it is to measure the frequency performance of audio components with the Bode 100. To learn more about the versatile application possibilities we have with our device, visit our webpage www.omicron-lab.com. Have a great day.